Sharan is um, an initiative, a, a social enterprise started by Dr. Nandita Shah. She is the founder of Sharan and she was actually a homeopath earlier. She's still a homeopath, of course, but uh, it was uh, a health issue that she herself had a very rare autoimmune disorder called Guillain-Barre. And uh, that led her to find out about the diet, the whole food plant-based diet. And she was actually nearly bedridden and how she healed herself through food. And that's what gave her the confidence. And after that, she has not been prescribing any homeopathy pills, but has been, has been prescribing a healthy whole food plant-based diet, which has helped thousands and thousands of people reverse or prevent diseases. Anybody here in the audience who loves to have medicines? Anybody here who likes to have medicines? You can type no if you don't like to have medicines. Anybody here who likes to have medicines? Or anybody here who would like to live off medicines? Thank you, Manjali. No, right? Not at all. Yes, Vidya, not at all. Absolutely. And that's what Dr. Nandita is all about. She prescribes just a diet. And if you're on medication, there are high chances that you will be off your medication. And if you're not on medication, there are nearly 100% chances that you will not get on medication if you follow what she tells you to do. So without much ado, please allow me uh, to introduce Dr. Shah today, who's going to be enlightening us on a very, very uh, common health issue that we all take it for granted that, you know, 40 ke baad, 50 ke baad, sabko hota hai, blood pressure, what's the big deal, pop pills still, the end of your life and you're good and in fact just the other day in our meeting and our Sharon monthly meeting she was telling us that nowadays she's seeing many many younger patients um, who are getting hypertension as well so it's not only for older people it's even getting younger and younger and um, there's a high chance that any of us can you know get it so let's be prepared because prevention is better than cure as always so um May I invite Dr. Nandita Shah, the recipient of the Nari Shakti Puraskar, which is the largest award for women in our country, to enlighten us today as far as hypertension is concerned. Dr. Shah, over to you. Hello, everyone. Rena, thank you for that introduction. And welcome all of you to this program. So is there anyone here who has been following Sharan lifestyle and has got better, especially is there anyone here who has, who was on medicines for high blood pressure and is no longer on medicines? Okay, so Veena, you, would you like to share a little bit your story? Good evening, friends. Um, I have uh, been following the Sharon lifestyle for uh, uh, almost two years now. And um, I was taking BP tablets for um, almost uh, 30 plus years and I was on two tablets and uh, I also had severe acidity and um, sciatica pain. Following the Sharon lifestyle, I, uh, my acidity is gone and also my um, sciatica pain vanished. And about the blood pressure tablets, I was um, taking consultation with doctor and uh, I'm very happy to tell you all that it's been a month now and both my tablets have been uh, cut off. I've, I've stopped the tablets and, um, and I've been checking my blood pressure regularly for the last one month. Last 16th was the day when we stopped the tablets and today is the 17th and I'm very happy to tell everyone that my blood pressure is within the normal range. That is, it's somewhere around 120 by uh, 70, 120 by 80. And, uh, you know, uh, I've been monitoring it. And uh, yes, I'm feeling very happy. And uh, I'm really grateful to doctor for uh, helping me get on to the healthy lifestyle and uh, seeing the benefits through the Sharon lifestyle. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. So Veena, congratulations, because the only person who's done it is you. The only person who can heal us is ourselves. And really, you've done a great job. So congratulations. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful to the Sharon team and to you for helping me through uh, in this journey of mine. Thank really you. grateful. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to share over here? Okay. Um, uh, doctor, Manju, I think Manju, Manju yeah, would you Manju. like to share? It's lovely to see you, doctor. You know, uh, in 2016, after I became vegan, and thanks to your program, such a lot has happened. My BP, I don't take any BP medicine. The doctor insisted I have a little bit because of my other heart condition. And my BP would go as low as 60 and 100 and things. So I had to stop because, you know, it was reduced and then I had to stop because it was going below normal. So I think that was the most wonderful thing, you know, that happened. And Manchu, while you're at it, would you like to tell them what other things changed after you changed to a plant-based diet? My gosh, my, uh, besides the plant-based diet, I was also consulting with you. So bit by bit, bit by bit from I don't know how many tablets, we are, except for now uh, the thyroid tablet and vitamin B12 and uh, uh, D, I'm mostly off everything. Wow. And I was having for sleep apnea, I was having for some nerves because uh, my feet would get hot and would feel numb and BP and cholesterol and God knows what all. And I was borderline diabetes. Then this time my diabetes HPCA report came to 5.6. Wow, congratulations, you, Manju. You, congratulations for all you've done. And I know it's been a long <laughs> journey, but it has been progress, I know. progress and progress. So congratulations. I know this is not the right place that I'm going to be. I want to talk to you, which I'll send you a mail. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Yes. Is there anyone else who would like to share before I start? I am Jagdish Bausar. Okay, great. I am regularly doing exercise uh -huh. and following the raw, raw food and cooked food 50 50 percent. Wow. And following the intermittent fasting. Okay. I recently joined your uh, Saran. Uh -huh. I, I am looking for this organizing, organized foods, organized, particularly organic, organized organic. vegetables. Yes. Presently, I am following this since last 2018. My diabetes, medi diabetes medicine is stopped. Okay. And uh, blood pressure medicine is stopped from 2020. I am regularly checking my blood pressure. Wow. If the doctor advice, whenever I am going to hill station, I am taking the medicine only at that time. Okay. They told me that during the hill, during the hill station, your uh, BP will be high, around 20 to 20 percent. 20 points. Okay. Why so all medicine, medicine is stopped? From Wonderful. That's really great. And can you tell me how much is your blood pressure now when you don't take medicine? 139, 140, 1, 142, and uh, 89, 88, 80, 78, like lovely. that way. That's really lovely. Congratulations, Jagdish. Okay, and so then now there are a few other people who are saying that I am uh, taking tablets for high blood pressure. So now we're going to start talking about how we all can reverse high blood pressure. And my goal today is to explain to you what is high blood pressure? What exactly is blood pressure? Why do people get high blood pressure? And what can we do to avoid high blood pressure if we don't have it? And if we have it, how can we take steps to reverse high blood pressure? This is the topic for today. Hypertension can be reversed in most cases. And as Rena told you, Sharan stands for sanctuary for health and reconnection to animals and nature. And why reconnection to animals and nature? Animals and nature know how to be well because they're eating and living the way they have been designed to. But we eat and live the way we have been taught to by our culture, our society and advertisements. And so we are making mistakes because we're going against nature and that's why we're getting sick. Now, if we can change this a little bit, just a little change of course, and we can be really well. And you know, today, May 17th is World Hypertension Day. What a thing to have a day for hypertension. And the reason there's a special day for hypertension is because there are so many people with hypertension 
that we might as well make everyone aware so that they can get better or at least take treatment for it. It's really important to manage it, if not get better, because hypertension can cause so many complications. <clears throat> so few facts about hypertension, which you may or may not know. The majority of people with hypertension are not even aware that they have it. You know, just a few days ago, I saw a patient who was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, which is a result of high blood pressure. And he was hospitalized for chronic kidney disease. And that's when they found out that his high blood, his pressure was so high, they had, he had just never checked it. And if he had, and if he had controlled it, maybe he would not have got chronic kidney disease. So one thing that we all can do, and it's a really simple thing to do, is get hold of a blood pressure instrument and check your blood pressure. And nowadays, so many people have a blood pressure instrument at home and many people are checking. So if you don't have one, you can probably just go next door in your building or to a nearby neighbor and borrow one and check your blood pressure. Or you can go to any doctor and just get a blood pressure check. But this is mandatory. Just like checking vitamin B12 and vitamin D and having regular blood tests once in at least two years, we should also check our blood pressure once in a while. The diagnosis of blood pressure of a blood pressure of more than 140 by 90 on two consecutive days. If someone has more than 140 by 90 in two consecutive days, then they are termed as hypertensive or having high blood pressure. So it's so simple to make the diagnosis. Like these days, there are so many people with such severe illnesses and it's difficult to diagnose, but blood pressure, it's easy. Almost everyone has a blood pressure machine around them. And even young people these days are getting high blood pressure. So why not check everyone? And high blood pressure can lead to so many problems like erectile dysfunction in men. In fact, erectile dysfunction can be one of the first symptoms of high blood pressure. And then coronary artery disease. That means heart attack, angina, any of those, or stroke, or chronic kidney disease, or even memory loss and dementia, and many other things as well. We'll talk about these. And that's why it's so important that we check the blood pressure and do something about it. And it's estimated that 1.5 billion adults will be on hypertensives by 2025. Now imagine, if we have 8 billion people on the planet, all are not adults, and 1.5 billion adults have hypertension or a little less, say, that's a lot of people having hypertension, isn't it? It could be you or me, so we've got to get it checked as well. And the current approach is to this problem. When we go to the doctor, the doctor says, limit red meat and fried food. Now, honestly, whether you have high blood pressure or not, we shouldn't eat meat and we shouldn't eat fried foods or we should limit them. So why should we not eat red meat? You know, we've been brought up thinking that we're omnivores, but a true omnivore can pounce on its prey, tear it apart, and eat it raw. And we cannot eat any of the animals that we eat raw. Meat is not our food. We have teeth like a herbivore. We have a digestive system like a herbivore. We shouldn't eat this. And fried foods, you know, we are the only species that makes our food less nutritious before eating by refining. And oil is one such refined product. Oil has no nutrition at all. And so it'd be really good not to heat foods to that level where they lose all their nutrition and not to use oil on foods. 
So any way we can all adopt these and minimize our intake of animal products, you know, vegetarians and non-vegetarians get the same disease and that's because meat and milk have the same property, high protein, high fat, and no fiber. So they cause the same diseases in us. So when a non-vegetarian goes out to eat, they order chicken. When a vegetarian goes out to eat, they order paneer. Both of them get sick, right? So we want to minimize animal products and we want to minimize refined foods. And that's a bit more than doctors recommend, but it's worth it. And then doctors suggest reduce salt intake. Now, salt is necessary for us. Some salt is necessary. But when we buy ready-made packaged food, etc., they add a little bit more salt because salt makes things addictive. So we should take extra salt, just normal salt, just a little bit of salt. Many things taste great without any salt. And then doctors prescribe antihypertensives, blood pressure medicines. And you know, many times patients go to the doctor and they take blood pressure medicines. And then after two years, the doctor says, hey, I'm gonna change your medicine. Your blood pressure is no longer in control. And they give a new medicine. And many times patients don't know that this new medicine is just two medicines rolled into one. So whenever doctors change the medicine, almost always they are increasing the dose. And then they give blood thinners and they give blood thinners like Ecosprin or Clopidab and they give cholesterol lowering drugs like Rosuvastatin or Atorvastatin. And that's the way they manage high blood pressure. And over a period of time, blood pressure rises. Now, when we talk about reversing, what do we mean? We mean that your blood vessels go back to earlier ways, you know, and I'll explain this soon. So the blood, blood vessels become wider. And when you check your blood pressure, you no longer have something above 140 by 90. It's lower than 140 by 90 consistently and you're not taking any medicines. That's what reversing means. And I know that some of you have challenges reversing high blood pressure. And I want to tell you something. We all can do it, almost all of us, okay? Now, if you want to reverse any disease, this is not just high blood pressure. If you want to reverse any disease, what do you need to do? So when we go to the doctor, doctor treats symptoms. But what are we going to do? We are going to understand the cause and remove it. So we are going to look at what is the cause of high blood pressure. But before we get there, we are going to first think, what is high blood pressure exactly? Because once we understand what's happening in our body when we have high blood pressure, then we will know exactly what to do to reverse it. So here's an image of the heart inside the thoracic cavity. And you know, the heart is protected by the bones, by the... Um, by the... Um, the rib cage, the, uh, the heart is protected by the rib cage so that nothing will ever injure it because it's such a vital organ. In fact, our most vital organs are totally protected. The heart, the liver is at the bottom of the rib cage and is a protect, protected, and the brain is pro totally protected with the skull, right? And the heart has to pump blood through the entire body, every single second of every single day. It never gets a holiday. And if these arteries or blood vessels become clogged, if they become narrower, 
then the heart has to pump harder and that is high blood pressure. So the blood pressure is the amount of pressure that the heart has to exert to push the blood everywhere. And if someone has low, naturally low blood pressure, it's good because it means that your heart doesn't have to push too hard to push the blood everywhere, right? Now, over the years, if people follow a standard diet, what people in our culture do, then the blood vessels get narrower and narrower and finally they begin to get clogged. And our body is so amazing that until our arteries are 70% blocked, we don't even feel it. But because we don't live the way we should, we are blocking our arteries every single day. And so it doesn't take long for them to reach above 70% block and then we get symptoms. Above 70%, isn't that sad? So we can change that. Now, just to understand what's really happening, imagine if you have a kitchen sink and you are someone who cooks fried foods regularly and then pours all the excess oil down the sink. Then you will see that the pipe that goes from your sink out is getting clogged over a period of time. The pipe gets clogged with fat because fat doesn't dissolve in water. Now that's exactly what happens in our arteries. Just imagine that this is an artery. This is just a plastic bottle I'm using for demos. But imagine that this is an artery and you have your blood flowing through and it's flowing nicely. This water is blood, imagine. And now I put in a tablespoon of oil. Will the blood flow nicely? No. This water will become viscid, sticky. You know, if you have a bottle of oil, it will flow. If you have a bottle of water, it will flow. But if you put oil in water, then it gets viscid. So if we consume oil, that's why doctors say don't eat fried foods. If we consume oil, then the oil goes into our bloodstream and it makes our blood thick. And that thick blood injures the artery walls. And then, so here you can see a diagram. You see the first, um, the first image on the top left is a clear artery. And then you see the second one on the right is an artery that has been damaged because the blood became thick. And this injury on the artery wall is bandaged with cholesterol. And then over a period of time with repeated injuries, you can see the image on the bottom right, the bottom left, you can see over a period of time with repeated injuries, the artery gets smaller and smaller. And the last one is actually a clogged artery. We are doing this to ourselves and we're doing it by consuming fat. And you know, there are lots of foods that have fat. First is fried foods, of course. But in our everyday cooking, people use oil. They put in a spoonful of oil, then they put in the onions and fry them. They put in the, uh, the spices and tadka. And we have oil every single day. And if you eat out, you have more oil maybe than you even have in your house. And many people eat out day by day. Now, why do cooks love to use oil? Oil raises the temperature and so things cook really fast. But it's not good for us, right? And it's really easy to cook everything that you love without oil. So... It's a bit of a waste to use oil because it's clogging up our arteries just like that kitchen sink and it's eventually causing problems. And you know, it's not just oil, but even all animal products have free fat. So for example, 
If you boil milk, you get fat on top. If you boil chicken, fish, or meat, you get a layer of fat on top. And this fat is a little worse than oil because it's solid at room temperature. And so you can imagine that if you put, instead of oil, ghee in this, then the flow is going to be even worse because ghee is more solid than oil at room temperature. And that's what happens in our arteries as well. Now, animal products are full of fat, but they don't have fiber. If you think about it, peanuts, sesame, coconut, they all have a lot of fat and even oil is made from them. But if you put peanuts or sesame or coconut in a pot of boiling water, you will never get a layer of fat on top. And that's just because the fiber holds on to the fat. And it's the same in our body. If we eat peanuts or coconut or sesame, then the fiber in them holds on to the fat and it doesn't allow all this to happen. Now, see, our body is so amazing. If you see the first artery in the diagram, you see a nice open artery. But in the middle one, over a period of time, it's getting blocked. But the body produces its own bypass. And this is called collateral circulation. So that as the artery gets blocked over a period of time, there's a collateral circulation and we don't even feel it. By the time the artery is fully blocked, there's a parallel circulation that has formed. But this doesn't happen if, I'm just going to go to the slide ahead first, this doesn't happen if this narrowing of the arteries isn't gradual. For example, see the artery below. Now here you can see a buildup of plaque. That yellow colored stuff is plaque. And if this was just to break away from the artery and go into the bloodstream and go from this larger artery into the smaller arteries, of say the heart or the brain, then we could get a sudden heart attack or stroke. Now you can see on the diagram A that this is a heart attack that has happened because suddenly a piece of plaque blocked the artery and it happened suddenly. So there was no collateral circulation. But you can see diagram B where over a period of time, the artery was getting narrowed. And so a collateral circulation has formed. You know, today, a lot of bypass surgeries and stents put in and all this is done when we don't really need it because it's not sudden. So we go for a routine angiogram and we find that oh, one artery is 80% blocked or 90% blocked. And then we are told that we need to get surgery done right away. And it may not always be the truth because you may have a collateral circulation because our body always works to heal. And so if we want to heal our body, we have to first figure out what we have what are the causes of it? Remove the causes, body works to heal, right? So now, does anyone know what are the symptoms of high blood pressure? The first is that you can be without any symptom. You don't even know that you're walking around with high blood pressure. But then there are other symptoms. It could be chronic headaches. Frequent headaches, even migraines can be because of constriction of the arteries in the head. And that could be an initial sign of high blood pressure. Or dizziness and vertigo. And recently I had a patient who had dizziness and vertigo and was given high blood pressure medicines. And it's only been a month that he's on a plant-based diet 
and we had to quickly reduce his medicines because his blood pressure started falling and he's now totally off high blood pressure medicines. He was on two different ones in just a matter of a month. Blurry and double vision. It can cause drowsiness and fatigue. It can cause impotency or erectile dysfunction. It can cause shortness of breath, palpitations, flushing of the face, nosebleeds. You know, if the uh, blood pressure is too high, then these tiny blood vessels in the nose burst and we can get nosebleed. We can even get uh, tiny blood vessels in the throat bursting. And so when we cough, we can bring out blood, little, little amounts of blood. And then the frequency of urination, especially during the night can be a sign of high blood pressure ringing in the ears, tinnitus, and even nausea. Now, that doesn't mean that all these symptoms mean that you have high blood pressure. No, these are just symptoms. They can be a result of something else as well, but they can be a result of high blood pressure. For example, nosebleeds can be a result of just taking ecosprin every day, a blood thinner, or... Importancy can be a result of diabetes, right? So these are just symptoms, but these maybe can point to hypertension and they may point to other diseases as well. Now, blocked arteries anywhere can result in disease because every single cell of the body requires blood supply, a fresh blood supply, that means oxygenation and food every single moment of the day. So if a blood vessel suddenly gets blocked in the heart, we get a heart attack, or if it's narrow, we get angina. And if it happens in the brain, it's stroke. But if it happens, you know, if um, we don't get enough blood supply to our joints, we get joint pain. If we don't get blood supply to our back, we get back pain. If we don't get blood supply to internal organs, then we can get cancers because cancer cells can survive with less oxygen than normal cells. And so if there's not enough oxygen somewhere, we are inviting cancer cells to grow. So the causes of high blood pressure are number one, fat. It's the biggest cause. It's found in all animal products and it's found in oil, ghee, and butter. And these have to be minimized or stopped. The second is lack of fiber. And that's why we want to consume whole foods. That means unpolished rice and unpolished wheat and not peeling vegetables and so on no sugar or jaggery or fruit juice, rather fruits or dried fruits and so on. And that's why Sharon recommends a whole food, plant-based diet. And then meat contains something called free radicals that cause inflammation in the artery walls. And inflammation, as you know, leads to swelling and causes swelling, causes narrowing of the arteries. And that's why we want to avoid animal products which contain free radicals. Now, what's the opposite of free radicals? Antioxidants. And all fruits and vegetables contain antioxidants. And so we want to have more fruits and vegetables. And stress. And I know Vidya spoke about stress. And I want to say a word about stress here. Look, we can't solve each one of our stress problems in this short talk, but we can do something. We can understand what is the cause of many, many people's stress. And, you know, we often blame the stress on external factors. He did this to me, therefore I'm stressed. This happened to me, therefore I'm stressed. But truly, 
if we shift our thinking and start taking responsibility for everything, then we can always see the good in everything that's happening and reduce our stress. That's one. The second thing is that when we get stressed, we produce a hormone called adrenaline. When animals are stressed, they produce adrenaline. If we eat animals, they are always stressed. Those chickens getting slaughtered one in front of the other, they are stressed. They contain adrenaline. If you eat chicken, you're getting adrenaline. That cow whose baby is taken away from her so that all her milk can be sold in the market, she is stressed. She wants to feed her baby. She has adrenaline in her milk. Those hens who lay eggs and are forced to lay 250 eggs a year, they are stressed. A normal hen lays 25, right, in a year. So we are stressing animals and then we're consuming them or their secretions and they are full of adrenaline and now we're stressed. So the very best way to reduce stress is to cut out animal products in our diet. Now, there are more ways. We can go for counseling. We can do meditation. We can do pranayam and yoga. And we should do all of these. But we shouldn't, we shouldn't um, not remove the cause. We have to remove the cause. And therefore, we have to stop animal products if we want to work on stress. Now, stress hormones are not measured quantitatively. They're measured, like even if you have a little bit of stress hormone, it's the energy of stress that's in you. And therefore, even if you have no dairy, except that one spoon of milk in your tea, you will get the stress hormones. And therefore, it requires a clean cut if you want to avoid stress. Beyond that, we have to have a whole talk on stress, right? Which we can't do today. But it's really important that we work on the stress if that is the cause of hypertension. And then lack of exercise. So many of us have lack of exercise. And I saw in the pandemic that people had a new excuse for lack of exercise that they couldn't go down. But truly... We could have got a lot of exercise just doing housework and all the things that we couldn't do before, right? So we have to figure out a way, but make sure to keep moving. And you know, lack of rest is as bad as lack of exercise. Our body heals between 10 and four in the night and you have to be asleep. So, it's really important to get to bed on time and wake up on time so that you've had rest, so that you can heal. And then lack of vitamin B12. Did you know that vitamin B12, lack of vitamin B12 actually causes high blood pressure and therefore, because it's so common, every single person needs to get their B12 checked and supplement if necessary. Okay, now this is one you don't want to hear, many of you. Tea, coffee, colas, alcohol, smoking, all raise blood pressure, even green tea. And therefore, we need to cut these out. And finally, excess salt. That means papad and pickles and all those preserved. Salt is a preservative. So wherever it's used as a preservative, those are the things we got to avoid more. Now, not everyone is very sensitive to excess salt, but some people are and it raises their blood pressure immediately. Now, when we go to the doctor, and I've already shown this slide, they say limit red meat and fried foods, but we are going to limit all animal products and all refined products because 
we understand that it's not just red meat that's bad. All those animal products are harmful and they're not our food. And we can have sesame or peanuts or coconut, but we shouldn't have fried foods, right? And someone had written about an air fryer and yes, we can use an air fryer if we're missing those fried foods too much. Or even we can bake them. Then we should reduce salt intake, that is true. But instead of antihypertensive, so what do antihypertensives do? They dilate the blood vessel, right? So your blood vessel is blocked and now you take an antihypertensive to dilate it. No, we should be instead removing this blockage. And how can we remove this blockage? Remember I told you that we can use fiber because fiber makes our blood thin naturally. And so fiber, that thin blood, cleans out these clogs slowly and eventually your arteries can open up to what they were when you were young. And then, or younger, depending on whatever your age is. And instead of blood thinners, we should have no fat. No fat is a blood thinner. Remember I showed you this bottle with water flowing through it? And then, so we don't need EcoSprint. And I just want to make a correction here. If someone has had intervention already, like a stent put in or um, they've had a bypass surgery or any stitches in the heart, then they do need to take blood thinners their entire lives because you can get clots around the stents. But for the rest of us, we don't need blood thinners our entire lives. We need to make our blood thin by not consuming fat and by consuming more fiber. And cholesterol lowering drugs. Doctors give cholesterol lowering drugs, but how are we going to lower the cholesterol? Did you know that only animals produce cholesterol? There's no cholesterol in plants and therefore, if we eat a plant-based diet, there's no cholesterol coming in. Eventually the cholesterol which has got, which has collected is going to go out and we will reduce the blood pressure. Now, foods rich in fats are all animal products and all refined plant fats, right? We talked about this already. There's one thing that we didn't talk about that other medicines can raise blood pressure. And that's why it's important not just to uh, get, uh, you know, work on holistic healing, but it's important to minimize all the medicines wherever they're not required as soon as possible. And that's what we do. We work on overall health. So for example, Alcohols can cause high blood pressure. Antidepressants can cause high blood pressure. And I've treated people with, uh, you know, depression and uh, diabetes and high blood pressure. And it's hard because these medicines cause problems and then it's a vicious cycle. So it's really important to think about causes of disease, remove them, reduce medicines. The more medicines you reduce, the faster you heal. And I've seen in our 21 day retreat that when people come with lots of medicines, they get off medicines quickly because many of the medicines are for the side effects of the other medicines. And as we remove medicines, they get well so fast. So it's really important to have the help of a doctor reduce your medicines wherever required and not to continue with medicines that are not required. And then I just wanted to show this chart because on the left-hand side, you can see animal foods. 
And on the right hand side, you can see plant foods. And you can see that animal foods contain much more fat than plants. But if we are plant-based, we are still going to get the amount of fat we need. And only animal products contain cholesterol. Plants never make cholesterol. There is no cholesterol in coconut or even in cashews. There's no cholesterol in plants. Now, cow's milk, 49% of its calories come from fat. So just going back to the meat, we saw that meat has less percentage in most cases, except for mutton and sear fish. Beef or chicken has less fat than milk. And we often don't consume milk, but we consume cheese and paneer which is a concentrated form of fat. And so we need to be very careful with these things. So in summary, what should we do? We should change the diet. We should avoid tea, coffee, colas, and alcohol. Sorry, I forgot to write alcohol there. And we should also avoid smoking. So tea, coffee, colas, alcohol, and smoking. And then we should exercise, we should rest at the right time. No staying up all night and going to sleep till lunchtime and all that. And supplement with vitamin B12. Now that's pretty simple, right? And I just want to show you, vitamin B12 should be methylcobalamin, and only 500 microgram and not more and not cyanocobalamin. Now, if you can't remember this, don't worry. There's a section on vitamin B12, which you should read anyway on our website under Try Vegan. And our level should be around 400 PG per ml. And finally, if we don't reduce the medicine as the health improves, then the blood pressure will be too low, which means that the blood is not reaching everywhere. That's not good either. So it's really important to reduce the medicine as the blood pressure comes down. Now, I just wanted to let you know about a meal plan so that you can think that, you know, those of you who are thinking this might be difficult, let's see a meal plan. So in general, the current meal plan of most people is wake up, have tea, coffee, biscuits. Breakfast could be poha, idli, dosa, upma, cereal, eggs, toast, sandwich, paratha. Then a snack could be tea, coffee, and biscuits. Then lunch could be chapati, sabzi, dal, rice, curds, buttermilk, something like that. Then the snack in the evening could be the killer fried namkeens, and dinner could be chapati, sabzi, dal, rice, curd, buttermilk, pasta, soup, salad, pizza, whatever. And those who are non-vegetarian, you can add non-vegetarian items to the lunch and dinner. Now, what is the new menu? It would be wake up and have a herbal infusion or just water with lime juice room temperature water with lime juice because lime is rich in vitamin C, but it gets oxidized when you use hot water. So plain room temperature water with lime juice or herbal tea. Then breakfast, no matter what, your breakfast should be green smoothie and fruit. And if you don't know about green smoothies, go to our YouTube channel where we have a whole playlist of smoothies with Sharan, or go to our website under the recipes section and see how to make a wonderful green smoothie. And you know, green smoothie consists of green leaves and fruit. And for most of us, it's hard to wrap our minds around green leaves and fruit together. So there are a lot of people, including me, when I heard about green smoothies, 
I didn't jump into it because I didn't know how I'd mix my fruits with the greens. But when I did finally do it, now I don't want to have a day without them. And I can tell you that children love them too. So try it. And then snacks. Snacks could be poha, idli, dosa, upma, muesli, tofu scrambled instead of eggs or stuffed paratha or anything. Or it could just be a herbal tea and peanuts. It could be, you don't even have to have a snack. But if you have any of these things, they should be made with whole grain. For example, red rice poha or idli made with whole red rice and whole urad dal. And you can see all these recipes on our website. Then lunch, at least one fifth of one uh, fourth of the meal should be salad. No more than one fourth should be grain, as in chapati or whole rice. But the rest can be sabzi, dal, or whatever, right? And then snacks. Instead of those fried namkeens, if you love green smoothies like me, you could have it. Or you could also have sprout chaat, chole chaat, aloo chaat, sweet potato chaat, or something like that. And then dinner could be, again, like lunch, anything that you wanted with one fourth of the meal as raw salads. And we have so many recipes right from pastas to pizzas and Thai curry made with whole ingredients on our website. And the next menu, which I'm not going to go into is a more Western menu, but it's the same concept. Now, Many people think that I don't have time for this. I'm ordering my food through Swiggy and Zomato. How am I going to do all this? And truly, it doesn't take long to cook this way. But it takes some time to learn to cook this way. But it's faster than ordering from Swiggy and waiting for the food to arrive. So, I just put this cartoon. If we don't have time for health today, we, it is going to come to the top of our agenda later on, right? This doctor is telling this guy, what fits your busy schedule better? Exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? And that's the truth. We really have to think about it. So, uh, it's eight o'clock and that's when I went, meant to end. But how can Sharon help you? You can join all our free talks like this and you can do that just by making sure that you're on our mailing list. If you've come to this program, then you are on our mailing list, but the mails could end up in your promotions box or in your spam. Don't let that happen. And you can also opt for WhatsApp, um, daily WhatsApp communication. So you get little tips every day of how you can get better. And then we have a fabulous website. Our YouTube channel is amazing. And we have newsletters every 15 days so that you get little tips on how you can get better. And then we have cooking classes. So if you don't know how to cook without oil, then we have ready-made online, uh, an online basic cooking class in Hindi and English. And then we have all these fabulous cooking classes where you can learn to make anything that comes to your mind. And then we have consultations. We have a team of doctors and nutritionists that you can consult with and get well in a short period of time. And you know, Veena and Manjuhu were uh, talking about their, um, their reversal of hypertension in the beginning. Both of them were my patients. They had come for consultations and now they're better. So there's so many ways, you know, and you don't even have to wait for a consultation. You just get on our website, look at the recipes and start. And then nowadays we have retreats. Every month we have retreats. And you know, one of the best things about retreats is that 
people often go for holidays and they get sick. But in these retreats, not only will you get healthier, but you'll learn how to stay well the rest of your life. And so some of these, uh, you know, people have, people have gone to these shorter retreats. I do a 21 day retreat every year, but not everyone can come for 21 days, but now we have shorter retreats, four days, seven days. And that's just to give you the experience so that you can bring that experience home with you and follow it later. So we are committed to building a culture of health. And um, if you're with us, you can definitely build your health. Mm -hmm.